We're going to, I guess, jump right in and get started. Uh, this is podcasting setups. Let's get nerdy. Uh, let me go full screen on this bad boy. There we go. So you don't see all my weird plugins. Uh, my name is Tim Bornholt. I am the co-founder of the Jed Mahonis Group. Uh, but the reason I'm here today is because of podcasting. So I host a podcast called Constant Variables, where we talk about all things technical in a non-technical way. And I edit a podcast called C Tolly Run, which is uh, a podcast about running and fitness hosted by Olympian Carrie Tollefson. Uh, so I've been in the podcasting space for many years. I've listened to podcasts pretty much uh, since they've been a thing. So I, I have a lot to share and I'm going to talk really fast and cram it all in. Uh, so please feel free to ask questions and I will. Uh, I, have, I have time at the end uh, to, to go over them if there are any. Let's get started by talking about the ideal podcasting setup. Uh, one of my favorite ask reddit threads that i've ever seen uh had a question posed that said you know what hobby starts out inexpensive but becomes very expensive as you get into it and uh since there's no crowd here to interact with i'll just jump right ahead the answer is every hobby every hobby starts out super inexpensive uh you, pretty much free. Like I, I like running, uh, but it starts out free. And as you get going into it with running marathons and ultra marathons, the entry fees get expensive. Same with podcasting. Uh, it can start out really cheap and get really expensive. So when we're talking about the ideal podcasting setup, there's two things that you got to keep in mind. First of all, it's got to sound good. No one wants to listen to, you know, back in the day, the stereotype was uh, two kind of nerds talking about Star Trek in their parents' basement, <laughs> something like that. Uh, the quality level and the barrier, uh, the, the uh, ceiling of entry, floor of entry, uh, has raised. So you got to sound good. That's just kind of uh, table stakes. Uh, it's also got to be easy to use. I don't want to recommend something to you that is going to be uh, hard to set up, uh, complex to use, not fun to use. Uh, everything that I'm going to talk talk about in this talk is easy to use. You can just jump right in and get podcasting right away. So most important about your setup before we even talk about hardware and microphones and all that fun stuff is where you're physically located. Um, you're probably not here. <laughs> uh, thanks to COVID, you're probably not going into a recording studio. You can. There's certainly places like Studio Americana. Uh, there's different shops all around the Twin Cities that you can go to to record a podcast. Uh, and those work out perfectly fine. Uh, but honestly, you're probably recording from home these days. So let's talk about how to set up your house to be a conducive environment for recording a podcast. The golden rule, the rule of thumb, where you want to record in your house, you want to be in the room that has the least room noise possible, uh, which isn't always doable for everybody. I mean, I'm in my bedroom, so I don't really have a, a, a great setup for a podcast environment, but uh, we'll talk about some ways to improve on what you have. Uh, the key to it is eliminating room noise. So if you, you know, if I stopped talking for a second so that you can hear what's going on in your room, uh, just take a second and listen for just really briefly. So right now in my own room, I can hear the fans because I'm running Chrome. So let's be real. Your laptop fans are going to spin. Uh, I hear the lawnmower going outside. I hear my kids yelling down in the basement. I hear the air circulating through the room. We want to get rid of all of that stuff. So here's some tips on how to eliminate room noise. And I'm going to use this uh, Instagram picture I found of Jenna Fisher from a couple weeks ago. Uh, she was Pam Beasley on The Office, and she hosts a podcast called Office Ladies. And she records it out of a... Uh, a closet in her in her room. So um, that's tip number one: record in your closet. Uh, the the uh, acoustics of a closet work really really well for capturing high quality audio. And what is interesting about it is uh, when you have your closet, and I'm pointing this way because that's my closet. <laughs> uh, if you if you look inside your closet, you can actually see uh, all the clothes that are in there act as a sound uh, killing mechanism. So when you speak, your sound doesn't just go bounce off and all around the room. Uh, it just dies. And that's what you want is you want it to be quiet. If you don't have the luxury of recording in an office or in a, uh, a uh, studio or in a closet, uh, add furniture that absorbs sound. So I highlighted on in this picture with Jenna uh, that that usually tables and desks don't count because they actually reflect sound instead of absorb it. But she has kind of a card table going there. So I'll, I'll give her partial credit. Uh, her chair, obviously, that works perfect. Uh, in my bedroom, obviously, we have a bed. We have another big chair. Any kind of furniture that's going to absorb your sound instead of let it bounce off of the walls and back into your microphone phone, that's going to be hugely helpful. 
Add some sound dampening material. So you'll see in this picture, she has a rug on the floor so that the hardwood floor doesn't reflect sound. She has a couple of uh, uh, blankets suspended from the ceiling. Those help out tremendously as well to absorb all the sound. Uh, if you want to get hardcore about it, you can buy some sound dampening tiles like the uh, you go into a recording studio, that kind of egg uh, eggshell type material. Um, that works perfect for capturing sound. Uh, I don't want to have any marital strife though, so I don't have those hanging in, in my room right now. Um, and finally, a really good tip, if you're recording out on the road or you just don't have any way to kill off the sound in your room, grab a comforter and throw it over your microphone and just record under a blanket. It, you look ridiculous, but you sound like a million bucks. And I know so many people in the radio business and in the TV business that record voiceovers that if they're out in a hotel and they have nowhere else they can go, they just throw their comforter over their setup and, and away they go. The one caveat with that is though, don't get your computer under it because then again, all that fan noise is going to get captured uh, on your recorded track. All right, going fast, but again, now we're going into hardware. This is the fun stuff. Uh, I laughed about this. If, if the uh, dinosaur theme wasn't ridiculous enough, I had to include the dummies guy as well. Um, remember, things get expensive fast. So what we're looking for here is good quality and easy to use. I don't want to recommend like an $800 mixing board and a $2,000 microphone. You don't need all that stuff to get started. You can ramp up as time goes on. We just want something that's good quality and easy to use. So microphones, this is obviously the biggest part of the, the setup. Um, different microphones capture audio differently. There's two main types of microphones that you hear of in the podcasting space. There's dynamic microphones and condenser microphones. Condenser microphones work really well if you're in a controlled space. And actually, they're probably more preferred. Um, for the purposes of people that are just trying to get into this space, you probably don't need a condenser microphone because you probably don't have the ideal conditions. Your closet is not the ideal condition for recording. Uh, dynamic microphones are what you typically see on stage when you're looking at, like if you're at a rock concert and there's a guy singing into a microphone, that kind of a microphone is typically a dynamic microphone, which means it picks up a little more sound. It's a little more forgiving. Um, microphones are interesting because you need to have good mic technique. Um, so for example, right now I'm talking directly into my microphone. If I start to move off this way a little bit, I'm not changing the sound of my voice or the volume, but you can see as I move around, the quality gets better and worse. So having good mic technique is super important. Um, what's more important though, uh, when you're looking at your microphones versus you know condenser and dynamic is the pickup pattern. Uh, again, really high level. The pickup pattern is just your microphone can choose what, what angle sound is entering into it. So uh, what you're looking for is something called cardioid or super cardioid. Um, those patterns tend to just take on sound that comes directly into your microphone, as opposed to, again, talking over at this angle and talking at this angle. That's what helps isolate some of that background noise so you have a, a much higher quality sound. Super cardioid mics are great if you have great mic technique, but you have to have good mic technique. It's a this, is, this is a cardioid pattern, and if I was talking like this even, it would be very, very uh, hard to hear me. USB versus XLR. Um, Everyone knows what USB is. Uh, it's very easy to get started with a USB mic. This is actually a USB mic. It's the Rode Podcaster, which I'm not recommending. <laughs> I got this about seven years ago and it still works for me. Um, but USB microphones are great if you just wanna plug something in and go. Um, they, the, the downside is that if any part of the microphone fails, then you have to replace the whole setup. XLR setups are a little bit higher quality uh, and they, they are more extensible. So you can have, as you go, you can replace gear and, and if something fails, you can just replace that one component as opposed to all of it. Um, XLR setups are ideal uh, if you're recording more than one person at a time. So uh, if, you're, if you plan on recording, like if, if you and another person are in the same room together, I would really recommend that you get an XLR uh, interface because I have two USB microphones and it is a pain in the neck to try to get that to uh, work correctly. So use an XLR interface if you're planning on uh, recording two or more people. And my recommendation is try to find a, uh, a box, an interface that has more inputs than you think you're going to need. Um, so for example, if it's always gonna be you and one guest, try to find a four uh, input 
setup because uh, you'll inv invariably as you grow, you're going to want to add, uh, there's going to be an episode where you want two guests. Uh, so just having that extensibility is really nice. And a good XLR interface is going to run you like 130 bucks. Uh, you can spend 800 bucks if you want all the fancy bells and whistles, but you don't need anything super crazy to, to get started here. All right, now we're going to actually talk about microphones. So um, if you don't want to spend any money and you just want to get started with podcasting, use what you got. Um, the microphone in your MacBook, or I'm, I'm assuming everyone here has a Mac. That's super presumptuous of me. Um, but the uh, what I what I uh, want to get off the bat right away with your uh, MacBook is that those are what's called an omnidirectional microphone. So it's going to pick up as much sound as possible versus what this is with that cardioid microphone pattern, where it's just getting focused sound. Um, you can also use your phone, just holding up your phone and and putting it right into your mouth. That works fine too, using the voice memos map. I, I know people record podcasts like that, and and uh, it and it works out just fine. But if you're going to use your laptop or your phone, use the headphones that came with your phone. You can see in the picture uh, right here, this is actually the microphone. Uh, and having the microphone as close to your mouth as possible is key for having a high quality setup. So if you're going to record using your phone, at least use a pair of the headphones that came with your phone. It's going to be higher quality. And same if you're going to record with your laptop. But I'm assuming you want to spend a little money, right? Because this is this is fun to spend money on. So uh, we're going to talk about some microphones. The prototypical beginner's microphone for podcasting is the Blue Yeti. It's 130 bucks. It's a USB microphone. It works just fine out of the box. You can actually change the pickup pattern in it to be cardioid or omnidirectional. Um, so it's very a, a very versatile mic. The downside, though, and the reason that I uh, am recommending it over the the next microphone for beginners is. Um, it's, it's more forgiving in how you talk into it, but you need to have the extra accessories to actually make it sound right. Because if you just leave it as is without a pop filter and a shock mount, it can pick up a lot of extra noise that can be detrimental to your final recording. Moving a step up, uh, which is actually cheaper, is the Audio-Technica ATR2100X. This is actually a USB and an XLR microphone. You can choose which kind you want, so it's extensible if you want to upgrade to uh, a different setup. Uh, the reason that I put it after the Yeti, though, is again, this that microphone there, the Audio-Technica, uh, is a super cardioid pattern, so you have to have really good mic technique if you're going to use this microphone, but if you can practice and get good with your mic technique, then I would recommend that's that seems to be that that's what most podcast hosts recommend for uh, for for beginners and, and, and the next level up. Now, if you're going to go into the XLR phase of things, the Shure Beta 87A is kind of podcast industry standard. A ton of people use this microphone. It's 250 bucks. It's got that super cardioid pattern. It works really, really well uh, with all types of voices. Um, when you start getting into this range, though, if you're going to start spending 250 bucks or more on a, a microphone, I would recommend trying a few different microphones out because different microphones work well with different voice types. I have obviously a more uh, a ma masculine voice, so it picks up more of the the bass. Uh, a more feminine voice might have more of the trebles and uh you just got to find which microphone sounds best for your voice. Uh, but a just a sure, that's a bad pun. A sure bet would be the sure beta if you're looking for just a general recommendation for a good XLR mic. Now, some accessories that you're going to need with your podcasting setup. You got to have a shock mount. That's this thing right here with the, the uh, rubber bands on it. Uh, it helps prevent vibrations from getting picked up. So as I'm sitting here uh, nervously tapping on the floor, that stuff's not getting picked up by this microphone. Um, make sure if you're buying a shock mount, get the one that's specifically designed for your microphone because of uh, the weights of microphones changes. So don't cheap out and just get the Amazon Basics one. Get one that's purpose built for whatever specific microphone you are going to record with. Pop filters, on the other hand, uh, you can buy the cheapest one, whatever you want. Mine's, uh, I think, technically more of a wind guard than a pop filter, but it works as a pop filter. So what pop filters do, and again, they're like the one that's on screen is like $10. They're super cheap, but it makes a world of difference because, first of all, it mellows out plosives. So this is your vocabulary word of the day, plosive. Uh, it is a harsh sounding consonant like p or t. The, when you say the P letter into your microphone, uh, you make a loud noise with your lips and then you expel a bunch of air 
right into your microphone, which causes clipping, which makes it sound really bad. So what a pop filter does is it mellows out some of those that air as it comes out so that you're not hitting it directly hard on with a hard consonant. Um, the other benefit to a pop filter is it prevents saliva from being built up. Um, so that the your saliva obviously contains salt. Salt can lead to corrosion, uh, and that would be a bad thing for your microphone. So uh, it's kind of like, think about it as a mask for your microphone. Headphones, God, I could talk for hours about microphones, but I've only got 25 minutes, so I'm trying to rattle through quickly. Uh, comfort, sound isolation, and neutrality are the three big things that I look for. Um, comfort, you're going to be wearing your headphones for an hour plus uh, and when you're editing even longer, so you need something that feels good. Sound isolation, you don't want sound coming out of your headphones and into your microphone. That would be bad news bears. And neutrality, you don't want to edit with some Beats by Dre. Those types of headphones are engineered to be bass heavy. You want them to be neutral so that they sound the best for your audience. Uh, and don't use Bluetooth headphones. Uh, there's a little bit of a lag inherent with the Bluetooth spec that when you're editing, you're going to hate yourself <laughs> for using Bluetooth headphones. Um, these are the MDR 7506s. If you walk into pretty much any radio station or podcast studio in the country, they're probably going to have these. They're 90 bucks. They're worth it. They're not great for consuming media, but they're great for creating media. Uh, a few other things really quick on the hardware side. Cables, uh, don't buy the gold-plated monster cables. Just get whatever cheap XLR cable or USB cables you use. They're all the same thing. Uh, a boom arm, that's what I have here. Uh, it's a nice to have. It's not a have to have, but it's kind of nice because then you can really position it exactly where you want it to be. And if you're going to be making podcast recordings while on the road, I would really recommend this Zoom H4n. There's other Zoom uh, models out there, but I've used the H4n for a number of years. Uh, there's XLR inputs right on the bottom, uh, right on this little spot right here, uh, and it records right to a SD card, and uh, it lasts forever on a, just a pack of uh, AA batteries. It's like a like an old school Game Boy. Software. Uh, again, I'm gonna fire through really quick. Uh, with software, um, how are you planning on recording? If you're going to be recording in person, just use GarageBand uh, if you don't want to uh, invest in any software. I use Logic. Um, people use Pro Tools and Audacity. Those are some other options, um, but it's pretty straightforward for recording podcasts in person. If you're doing virtual podcasts, uh, the second vocab word for the day is double ender. You want to make sure that you are recording your sound straight from your source and your guest is recording it on their end as well. So you can then afterwards put the two together and have the uh, highest quality possible sound that you can. Um, there's so many web-based solutions out there that do this. I use Zencaster personally. Um, Descript is another option, which I'll cover in a couple of minutes here. If you're going to use Skype or FaceTime or any of those other solutions, um, you can just record your guest straight on through it, but just be aware that it's going to sound worse. Like you're, it's going to sound like when you listen to the radio and the guest, the host sounds really great. And the other person sounds like they're calling in on a telephone. That's just something to, uh, to be aware of if you can't get that double ender going. All right, so editing. Um, again, GarageBand, Logic Pro, pretty straightforward. Descript is a really cool solution in this regard because uh, you what Descript does is it takes your audio and transcribes it. So it's like you basically, instead of editing your uh, the, uh, the WAV files, you actually can just drag and color uh, words and, and edit it like it's a Word document. So if you wanted to delete a word out of it, that would actually delete the word out of the audio. It's, uh, it's mind-blowing. Technology is awesome, isn't it? Um, when you're editing using Logic or GarageBand, there's three areas that I really focus hard on. Uh, EQ. Think of EQ as like an Instagram filter for a picture. You can take a really good quality picture just on its own, but if, you, uh, if you're going to uh, throw a little Instagram filter on top of it, it works phenomenally. It makes it look so much better. And the same with EQ. Just throw a basic EQ on top of your voice. There's different presets in all these packages and software packages. Just throw one in there. Um, a noise gate cuts out any noise when you're not talking, so it makes the end track sound a little bit better. And levels, you just want to make sure that you and, and your guest uh, are sounding about the same. Um, you don't you don't want to have one person louder than the other. So those are kind of the three areas that I focus on when when editing. Home stretch, uh, hosting platforms. <clears throat> so real quick, 
a podcast in, in its actual literal definition is an RSS feed with an enclosure. That enclosure is an MP3 file. So what you want to make sure, uh, basically you can host this anywhere. Um, but, uh, where I host it, just use Libsyn. Libsyn is an amazing podcast host. Um, it's like seven bucks a month to get started and you can add on more with statistics and stuff, but Libsyn will help package up your feed as an RSS feed and send it to Apple, to Spotify, to Google, to everybody that has their own on demand audio service, um, Libsyn will just let you submit it right to all of them at one time. It works awesome. And finally, uh, and again, ask questions in the in the chat because uh, I want to uh, leave some time for, for asking some questions. But tasks to outsource when it comes to podcasting, there's lots of things that you can do to outsource things you don't want to do. So find the things that you don't like doing and outsource it. Um, I edit C Tally run, but I don't edit constant variables. I have an awesome editor, Jordan. Uh, we pay him every episode and it works out great. You can usually find a good editor from anywhere from 80 to a hundred dollars an episode, I think is about industry standard. Um, producing uh, is also a task that I do not like doing. I don't like lining up guests and getting all that stuff set up. So we have Jenny on our side that goes through and gets everything set up. So all I have to do is show up, read the questions, do a little bit of research on the guest and away I go. It's awesome. Um, and promotion is another area on social media and all that. Uh, Jenny takes care of that for me as well. And it's great. So um, this is things you get into as you go. Uh, but that's kind of, uh, that's kind of where it's at. So that is that's where I'm at with my chat. <laughs> and I'm, I'm sorry for talking so fast. Um, the, the, I, I know that, uh, this dinosaur theme is weird, but I, I absolutely love it. I think we need a little bit of joy in our lives these days. Um, I'm looking through the, the chat. There was one question. If you are using your webcam, mic, should you get a pop filter? Um, probably I, it, if you're using your webcam, uh, microphone, um, it's going to be hard to, uh, the, the plosives probably won't be as like huge because you're not speaking directly into it. Um, and I don't even know, like if, if you're using like your built in laptop, I think they have some sort of pop filter built into it. So you might not necessarily need it, but, uh, I, I don't think that it would hurt. Uh, but I, I don't know if it would, <laughs> if it would help necessarily either. Um, and that's, that's the only, uh, that's the only question I see so far. Does, does anybody else, I, I wish I could open up the, uh, the crowd rise or uh, I don't remember what the, the hosting platform is. I wish I could open that up, but I'm afraid my Rosemount internet connection won't do too well. Um, I, if, if there's no other questions, I mean, I'm, I'm right at 1125. So, um, Ooh, let's see. Someone made a suggestion. Uh, crisp.ai is a good tool to eliminate some of this noise. Just talked about lawnmowers. Yep. That's perfect. Uh, what is the biggest challenge on building a target audience? Um, I think that, that probably the uh, the biggest, let's see, the biggest challenge on building a target audience. That's a really, really good question. Um, I think it's really just, it's the same with like coming after a business and having to iterate with like an MVP of what do people actually want to listen? It's kind of this yin and yang I've found of like with Tally Run, we just started out being running and fitness. And over time we evolved into kind of taking more of like a mom tint because Carrie's a mom. And uh, so she has a lot of guests on that have topics related to being a mom and running and fitness. And it just kind of naturally evolved that way because our the, the audience tells you, you know, you should interview this person. And so that, that kind of helps. Um, another, another type of, uh, with, with the constant variables, um, we thought of our target audience. Um, <clears throat> we thought of our target audience as being the, uh, uh, people that want to build apps, but don't know anything about technology and being a, uh, just a, a resource that we can bring on other people that also don't know much about technology and help explain it in a way that makes sense to everybody. Um, and I think the biggest challenge is just the same as building any business. You have to go find those people. Uh, and the way that we did it was just put crap on the internet. <laughs> I wish I had a better, uh, a better answer, but I, I'm more of a, a host than a marketer, I suppose. Um, what are the things that I really like about podcasting? Um, Definitely, it's uh, having my voice in people's ears is uh, such a huge way of building up uh, rapport and and uh, having uh, an audience that can trust what you're saying. Um, that's why podcasting advertising is so effective is uh, when you hear somebody that you trust that you hear like directly in your ears. Um, it's a really like, uh, it's, it's weird to say, but it's kind of like an intimate relationship that you can get with somebody. And uh, it's nice to have... Um, 
it, it and it, me being a host, that's one thing, but I feel like there's all these podcasts that I listen to with these hosts where I've never met them before, but I feel like I know all these intimate details about their lives because I listen to them for three hours every single week. Um, so I think that's kind of a, a, a really, if you're trying to build um, yourself up as a thought leader and you're trying to build yourself up as somebody who um, wants to help other people uh, with different things in their lives, uh, podcasting is a really great way to um, achieve that goal. It's the first breath I've taken uh, this whole time. Um, yeah, I, I, I think, uh, thank you for saying you love the vocab. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, any, if, if there's no other questions, I, I, can, I can yield my time. <laughs> yes, if you make, uh, it, it's the field of dreams. If, if you build it, they will come. And, and that's, I, I've, I looked for a podcast like constant variables that I, I couldn't find any when I was looking and, uh, and yeah, people, people find it. I don't know how we're like, we're, we're number one in, in Belarus, um, <laughs> for, for technology, or at least we were at one point and like see Tali run, we've been, uh, around the world, uh, not in the U S necessarily, but around the world, we get so many people that just find the show and it's, uh, it's if you that's the, that's such a cool thing about the internet is you can just find these communities of people that really uh, understand what you understand and are into what you are into. Um, do you keep your episodes on the cloud or stored somewhere? Libsyn is where I store all of them, so it's an interface that you upload your MP3s to, and then you fill in all the metadata, and then it stores the MP3 and embeds it in the the RSS feed. So um, Libsyn is where you actually host your your episodes. Um, a tool also if you're editing, look up Forecast. The website's forecast.io. Um, that helps you if you're going to do chapter markers in your podcasts. Uh, and it also has a really good compression uh, way to go from a wave to an MP3. How long did it take for me to get comfortable? Um, I've always wanted to do radio. Like I, I originally, I, I thought I'd be a radio Oz DJ, um, but that shut down when I was in like second grade. So that's not a thing anymore. Um, <laughs> but uh, I, I, I just, I, I like podcasting. I like talking with people. And I, I would say from the host end, it probably took me like, uh, 10 or 15 episodes to really get a, a good groove going of uh, feeling like I can just jump in and, and go for it. Um, how do you get good analytics or stats? Um, it depends on which platform you're using. Um, the kind of, I guess, a cool thing about podcasting is there isn't really a good way to get statistics. Um, the only real statistic people can really track is downloads, uh, unless you're using something like Spotify or a closed on uh, uh, system because of the open nature of podcasts, which is why I, I love them. Um, but uh, Libsyn actually has some good built-in stats uh, into their in, the, into their platform, so um, that's some place that you can uh, you can check to you know make sure that you've got uh, whatever stats you're looking for, especially if you're selling advertising on your podcast. <laughs> 